As winter approaches, the average American adult faces the inevitable two to three bouts of the common cold each year. Traditionally, it was believed that colder temperatures drove people indoors, facilitating the spread of cold and flu viruses. The proximity to others in enclosed spaces was thought to be the major culprit. However, groundbreaking research from the Massachusetts Eye and Ear Hospital in Northeastern University challenges this notion. Their recent study, published in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, indicates that the risk of falling ill might have biological roots linked to the drop in temperature. The nose is one of the first points of contact between the outside world and the inside body. When virus particles infiltrate our nasal cavities, cells spring into action and expel them. However, the new findings reveal that colder temperatures substantially hamper this immune response. What the researchers found out is that nasal cells release extracellular vesicles, EVs, filled with fluid to combat bacteria. These EVs act as defenders surrounding and attacking bacteria before they can infect the cells. The researchers expanded their investigation to explore how the nose responds to viruses. When common cold viruses are present, EVs are released. They contain molecules, microRNA, that are effectively there to neutralize the virus. These EVs act as decoys, diverting virus particles away from nasal cells. Researchers hypothesized that the prevalence of colds and flu in winter might be connected to the impact of cold air on the nasal immune response. Exposing nasal tissues to temperatures around 39.9 degrees Fahrenheit resulted in a 9 degree Fahrenheit decrease, significantly compromising the immune system. The number of EVs released decreased by more than 40%, diminishing their effectiveness. Overall, this reduced response can make the virus then more able to both stick to and infect the nasal cells. Symptoms of cold-related illnesses typically manifest in one location, the nose. That could be a runny nose, a stuffy nose, post-nasal drip, sneezing, and according to researchers, even a sore throat and cough. Certain groups of people like young children or individuals in densely populated areas or those with weakened immune systems and transplant patients with cancer are all more susceptible to severe symptoms or complications. In the meantime, make sure you take your vitamin C. These are Interesting Things with JC.